Hi, it's Tom here at FDS and today we are going to look at the Hera. Um, obviously you can see this one's open and uh, because of the contrast of white on white I'm not using my usual white background, we're just on the cutting mat today. So uh, that's why the background is a different colour. And uh, we're going to use a MOSFET in this mod because there's already quite a nice little lever action micro switch in the uh, rev trigger of the Hera. And I have to say it's probably the most comfortable one that I've come across. Now you can swap that for a Cherry DC2 short lever. and. Uh, I would advise against using the comically large 21 amp on run like a hairy barbarian oaf um, because there's just not the room for it. And, uh, we are going to do the civilised and proper mod for this and what we've got here is we've got um, the stop wiring, we've got the jam door switch which I'm going to retain because I want to light the interior of my jam door. I'm going to put a little LED up here in the back out the way uh, later on and um, I'll probably put some mood lighting into this blaster as well. And what we're going to do out of this is we're going to retain these two wires here. And what you've got there is you've got the um, output there, or the feed, and then this one. Yeah, it looks like it's going to the common somewhere. Anyway, it doesn't matter which way around these go. Um, I will use one of these to take electricity in and one of them to take electricity out. Those are my signal wires for the MOSFET. One of these, probably this one, will go direct to the main battery lead and then this one will go onto the MOSFET. Um, so you'll need to retain that. Then you need to remove the motor block. You can take all of this wiring out. Um, I'm going to keep these little uh, teals of wire on here because it's easier to attach to the wire and already those are conveniently coded for me so I'll leave those on um, and I'll just leave two little tails of wire probably in here to wire my LEDs. What you've got here on the stock loom, if you are just going to do a pack hack, there is your negative connector and there is your positive and I would advise taking a... and I'll just move this down so that you can see the tail end where the positive is not much space to fit this on the bench because it's long because of the stupidly large battery pack and if you are just going to do a quick pack hack to save yourself the ridiculous amount of money they want for the um, nickel metal hydride pack if you cut here on the positive and then uh, just chop the negative off down here like normal um, if you then attach a, a battery connector negative back here to a positive on this end and um, leave this here which is the um, PTC or thermosistor leave that in place because you're going to be leaving all this thin wiring in there so if that's if uh, a pack hack is your aim then that is how you do that and it's extremely simple it's uh, literally just negative to that one and then positive to that one and then just put an XT60 on the end, put the XT60 in the back and then you can drop any 2S LiPo into that. Don't put a 3S LiPo in because you probably will trip the PTC. PTC is there to protect your crappy thin stock components from current. The more voltage you put through it, the more current's drawn through it and the hotter it gets and then it reaches a temperature where it uh, just turns off. So I would keep it on 2S if you're going to pack hack it. We're not going to be that stupid, we're going to put a proper LiPo conversion in. There's not a lot of room for wiring and because the mag goes straight through the middle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run my motor wiring. I'm probably going to run up in here straight through this gap and where I'm going to put the FET is in here. So you'll be able to see the FET through the top of the battery compartment but there's ample space here even for any pretty much any pack. If you're going to do a minimized HERA, um, it might pay to um, move the MOSFET and probably the best place is in the well and um, just down in under here. There's a little bit of space or up here in the top. Um, it's not ideal. Now, there's not a lot of space in this shelf. It's actually quite economic. There's also some dead space down here which has got a helpful vent area in it. Um, you could put the MOSFET in there and that would mean you'd only have to run two thick wires and then um, two thin wires here. So that's nice and easy to do. And that's your option if you're going to go short on this. I know some people are about to cut the back off this and do hideous chopping to it, but we shall see. I'm going to keep this one full length because I quite like the balance as it is, and I want to actually use it as a primary. The annoying thing about it is it's got no sling mounts. I'm not doing a review of the Hero, I'm just going to mod it. So, retain those two. The rest of this is all going to come out, so I'm just going to remove all of that, and then I'll come to wiring the motor block. Right, just while we're looking at how to remove these, um, I'm going to use the solder sucker again because um, you can see that there's quite a lot of stuff going on here. What I've done is I've just cut these thin wires um, from the inductors or from whatever those are. I know those are the inductors and um, those look like further PTCs. Um, but I've removed the um, wire, just cut it off the can and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to heat this up and then I'm going to suck the solder off with the solder sucker. To the guy who thought this was a big blue dildo, for fuck's sake mate, sort your shit out.
now you can see look, a nice neat removal from the can. And that is why you use the solder sucker um, instead of just hacking at it like some kind of noob. So there's a really good use for the solder sucker there and taking those off. Now what you do need to remember is you do need to remember which one's which. So I'm going to put a little mark on this side to remind me that that's the um, negative and that this one is the positive so that I won't get them confused. Okay, so here's the uh, completed motor cage and uh, this one's just for Brit Nerf legend Bantaman because I've had to use blue wire here instead of black um, because I've run out of black. So what you've got is the positive wire ducks under. The main thing to remember is to keep out the way of the trigger mechanism, stay below the top of the uh, trigger stop and I cut these little tags back a little bit just to hold this. This is uh, 16 AWG silicon insulated um, which you do need for these motors really. They're about 15 amps each. So there's the positive uh, there's the positive lead going across and then I should have probably put that feed going the other way but it's all tucked out the way and you can see it's also kept clear here of the magazine which is another thing that you want to do. So that's how you set your block up. I've left the tails a little bit long um, so that I can figure out where I'm going to put things like the motor block plug which will probably just go into the shell in the same place as the MOSFET. So those are ready. That's now ready to be put back in. You don't really need to do anything else to this. Um, obviously I've left that jam door switch up there and I'll come back later and put some um, leads in for LEDs when I strip this blaster because I'm going to paint it but I'm not going to do that now because I've got a game this week that I want to try it out at. So there you go, there's your motor block ready to go and uh, now we'll move on to wiring up the MOSFET and setting it into the shell. Here's everything set and positioned into the shell and uh, you can see that that's a pretty neat fit now. And if we look along here, here's the wiring for the micro switch and uh, I'll probably use that longer one as a feed, that'll go to the MOSFET. I'm going to sit the MOSFET in here, in this convenient sub-compartment in the battery tray. Then obviously that one will then become the XT60 on the end, in there. And then this will go to the MOSFET and then there'll be another plug coming out to go into the battery tray. Because obviously when you do the MOSFET you wire direct to that. So all I've got to do now is put a, a little feed and then I'm going to split this wire um, in here. And obviously there'll be a Dean's connector in there when I've finished and then the uh, MOSFET will have its um, will have its uh, flyback diode in there and I don't put the flyback diode across the motors because uh, there's no space for it if you're if you're being clever you don't need to put a flyback diode even on um, dart guns so always put the diode before the plug and you'll notice I've done that on all my builds there's ample space in here to get that plug facing down um, in here or up against this back wall and I'll probably use a cable tidy of some kind. Um, you can see as, as per my normal wiring I've got my 10k resistor over the top. This is my usual standard IRFZ44N FET. Um, blaster Smiths will use a different one if they send you one of their high power kits for this blaster but the principle is exactly the same and they wire the same. Um, so if you've uh, got any doubts you can always look at their wiring diagram and uh, they've set that up on their web page. I'm ready to make the uh, first MOSFET connection and what I've done is I've taken this yellow wire and put it here onto the main battery positive and um, you could use the purple wire or the yellow wire. I think probably using the purple wire to feed the power in is going to be better because it was just slightly too short and I wanted a bit of room to play with the MOSFET position because I haven't done one of these before so I needed to work out where they are. Now this one um, just goes as we're looking at the MOSFET with it facing up with the heatsink um, on the bottom out the way. Um, it goes on that first left pin just the same as usual. I can't remember which one it is because I've given up caring about that kind of thing. I just bang them on and just make them the same way. They all seem to work. I can't remember whether it's the gate drain or the source. You can just watch my MOSFET video if you want the uh, detailed explanation, but um, I tend to just get on with them. There you have it. There you go. And that's your control wiring done. So you've got a power now going to the uh, control switch and then obviously when you close the rev trigger it'll now just um, give the gate voltage to the MOSFET. Then all I've got to do now is hook up the negative side to the MOSFET and put my flyback diode in and I'm good to go. Right, I've just been competing the plug-in motor block and I've used my usual Dean's connector and I've wrapped the flyback diode over on itself in here to reduce space because I needed to keep this vertical height low. And uh, you can see that that all fits in there quite nicely and then I'm ready to make a connection here um, down here to the MOSFET. So the MOSFET will go in there and then I just need to finish by running a negative battery lead to there and then she's all ready to test and obviously I'll do a test for you. Um, so I'm just going to make those last two connections to the MOSFET. So I've got the two neutral connections to make, remember it's an end channel FET and I'll have the um, 
out to the motors and then the in from the um, battery to do. So I'll just quickly get the wire ready for that and then I'll come and show you how that's going to go. Alright, making my last connection to the MOSFET again, the middle pin this time, uh, this one is the one that goes to the motor block. So that's going to your motor negative on the middle pin. And I've just got one more to do, which is going to be the one that goes up and out again. So I've made a loop of uh, more wire and this is the final pin and this is the one that goes to your battery, your main battery negative. So that's the third and final pin. Make sure you're working with your MOSFET the right way up if you don't want to get the pins confused and you can see I've got the heatsink facing down. What I've got now is if you look at how I've set this up, there's the MOSFET nice and out the way and then the loom just sits like that, wiring sits like that and there's your battery lead and then you'll put your pack in here and you'll just put your plug up on top where there's plenty of space. Um, I don't really think it's terribly practical to put the MOSFET in there because what you're trying to avoid is running a big fat wire right the way through this area where there's limited space around the flywheel cage. You've also got all these locating lugs here uh, which go into the body and you also don't want any wire going up over the top by them spinning flywheels because they're unguarded. So you're limited in where you can do it. I think that's the best place. Obviously if you weren't using a plug-in motor block it would be neater but I always keep those just in case they break. You don't have to put that in. Um, obviously the other option will be to use the MOSFET board and I've got a new iteration of that to show you because people don't seem to be keen to pay $10 for the pre-manufactured version uh, which is extremely annoying because I'd love to see that made because I think it's a really clever product um, but uh, there's the finished setup and then again on the end here all that now needs is just, two, is just an XT60 connector to finish off I've got one here somewhere and I'll just pop one of those on the end and then that is the loom ready for testing so I'll pop the XT60 on, when I've done that I'll show you the loom working. Okay so I've plugged my test pack in again um, I'm using four C cells for this because I always do and that gives me enough gate voltage and you can see here there's the MOSFET working beautifully uh, just to prove that it works on LiPo I've plugged in a little uh, 2S test pack here and uh, that FET will easily handle anything you can throw at it. I'm going to run this on a massive great big 3S pack probably for uh, more competitive games. I have cut a little bit out of the um, hop up as well, I forgot to tell you about that. Um, I'll see whether that survives. Normally they just get blown out the door when they get broken if they don't last properly. So that's pretty similar to the other one in the um, other rival blasters and you've got to get it out by taking the cage to bits. So there you go, all up and running.